All right, so good evening, everyone. Jose J. Garcia, real estate investor, coach, and mentor. We got another Sunday coaching series this evening. A uh, very interesting topic. Yeah, I've been requesting it quite a bit, and I'm seeing the same questions. So we figure we put a coaching on the above. Stop stressing. Stop overwhelming. It's definitely not going to help you out. So it is the time of the year. You know, everything with real estate tends to always be the whole location, location, location. You hear about it all the time. That's great. But we're talking about mobile homes. Mobile homes is not always location, location, location. As a matter of fact, typically never is. What it is, however, is timing. Right time, time, and time. You have 20 buyers today or this week. Does not mean 20 buyers are available next week. And some of you are seeing that in the above. But when you're talking about time and also with mobile homes, it's also the time of the year. So we are in the time of the year now where, yeah, most people don't have money. One thing to remind you along when you're thinking about mobile homes, and we will say this before we start the coaching call, their affordability housing. You know, a, a lot of investors are doing great rehabs. I'm seeing some of these. Uh, I don't want to share numbers with me because I know y'all are over slightly rehabbing them, and that's fine. You know what? If the numbers take out for you, then that's all that it matters. You know, no deal is the same. No investment is the same. But I know that some of these investors sending me pictures, they, they're they getting a little artistic, if you will. Again, if it checks out, the numbers look good for you, have at it. But when it's time to sell, that, that's when you really account for now, what is my return on my investments? Not only that, but how quickly can I get my money back? Because if you're doing some type of extravagant rehab on it and it's going to take you three, four years to get your money back, you may be in some trouble. You know, affordability housing is what mobile homes are. It doesn't matter how you put them. Some people said, uh, I know I was making a common couple calls back and I was saying about the whole California. And when I say don't invest in California, you know, I don't mean seriously. You know, if there's a deal out there, you invest anywhere where the numbers check out. But even out there, when you think about, you know, mobile homes are a million dollars or two million dollars. It just depends on where they're at. I know Malibu, California, I think they they have some for 10 million a mobile home. And, and we're talking single wides. Even then, it would be considered an affordability housing because of where it's located. Sure, the mobile home may be 10 million, but what are the houses around it? You see what I mean? It may be 50, 100 million, whatever it is in those areas. So it's still, for that sense, it's still affordability housing. Now, for you as an investor, obviously, that's probably not where you want to go. I, I don't want to fork out 5 million for a mobile home that I'm going to get returns of X amount and take me years to get. One of the beautiful things about mobile home investing is that you get your money back quickly. That, that's the way I like to invest in. Uh, you know, I don't see deficiencies when a bank or credit union does not want to lend on these. I see it as an opportunity, but that does not mean I want to uh, have money locked down for many, many years to come. So the way I typically approach something like that, and that's exactly what we're going to be covering here in a few minutes, is uh, how much down payment can you get if you do sell under payments? Lease option, create a note, rent to own, finance, call it whatever you want, put it on paper. But it's all about getting the money back. So typically on something like that is I like to get at least a down payment that covers me in full. Because if I have, let's say, 10000 into the mobile home and I'm selling it for twenty five k I would at least want ten k up front. Now, the remaining of that, I could say, well, I got my money back. And that was just that it's constant the passive income to come. It does not always happen that way. And that's when you got to start getting creative. OK, but uh, this time of year is, yes, you know. Affordability housing, you can't expect people to have 20,000, 20, 25,000, or even 30,000. Some of these mobile homes were selling in cash. Here you go. Not this time of year. You're going to see that in the beginning of the years, and that's because of income tax time. Everybody has money when taxes are coming back. Okay. So, and I did pin. Yes, I did. Welcome. Uh, a few more people are joining us on Instagram. So, good evening. We're covering, covering Sunday coaching series this evening. So, the name of this coaching call for tonight was... Uh, exit strategies uh, pre-2023. That's a good, uh, I, I like that. And, and again, it's the questions that are coming in. It's, uh, hey, Jay, nobody has X amount of down payment. Nobody wants to pay this amount of, for the mobile home or, you know, it's just uh, nobody has money. Okay, that's basically what they're telling me. So get creative. This is where we get creative. You know, last year, about this time of year, I had a few investors that had done some of our coachings and they didn't want to be landlords. They they kept repeating, I, I don't want to, I don't want to rent. I don't want to be a landlord. I don't want to deal with their leaky toilets or this or that. I don't want to hear from them. That was fine. But one of them went on to say, uh, how about I just hold on to it for now, and then I'll wait until they have income tax time, and then I'll sell them over to whoever buys it for cash. So he was destined to get cash no matter how you put it. That's what his aim was. Well, we changed that around a little bit. But uh, here's the thing about that is, you know, these mobile homes sit in a park, in, in a mobile home park, where you have to pay the lot rent for one. So every month, whether you're there, somebody's there living it, or is vacant, 
If that is your mobile home and you have it inside of a community, you have to pay lot rent every month. So if you're going to let us set for two, three months, that's two, three months worth of lot rent that you're having to pay out. Not to mention at the new year, you got taxes you have to pay on the property, on the mobile home, which isn't much. But again, all these things are allocated because an investor, you're adding all these pennies and dollars and change and all these are accruing an X amount balance. But then when you do sell it, that's when you can see what your ROI is. So if you're sitting there just spending, 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 and no money's coming in, this doesn't sound very productive, right? So what happens is instead of holding on to it, don't hold on to it, okay? Put it out for maybe a different type of strategy coming in. So what I will do on some of these mobile homes, we have quite a few that are being rehabbed. Let me, let me put this out there now. This is the perfect time to invest, not the other way around. I'm going to wait right now until the new year. No, no. Here's what you need to do. You need to rehab as many as you can. Get as many as possible and have them there and ready for when the new year comes in. Because right around February is when we start seeing people with income. They start having to, I think some people even get money sooner than that. Now, I've seen some people last year, I think January is, you know, so typically February to about April-ish and some into May. That's about when you can see people have money, okay? That's when you can really take the somebody having uh, 20, 25,000 cash. People borrow from each other, so get it how you will. But what I would do on something like that is do a month to month. Now, everything needs to be in writing. Everything needs to be in paper, legalized documents. These are things that you can be in front of a judge, in front of court, and you don't want to show up with he said, she said, with handshake. That doesn't work. Put it in paper, put it in writing. We use DocuSign. That is a terrific uh, system to use. Uh, I think we do pay a fee for that, but it, I mean, it more than pays itself. So what happens with that is, uh, you know, if I'm going to do a month to month is I'm simply pushing them into the new year. So come 2023, I am prepped. And last year we had multiple investors say, wow, all those sold. I wish I would have had more. Would I, could I, should I? That's not a good way to live by. Okay. You should have prepped and you should have had them ready. Now, the one thing that we talk about all the time is don't limit your exit strategies. I know some of y'all don't want to deal as a landlord and you're pretty strong about that. That's fine. But you realize that you can be a landlord in a sense and have no responsibilities. Should you put it on paper? So let's say one of these mobile homes I'll take it on, and I'm going to have to do month to month. So what I'm going to do is I am going to bump up the numbers because I know they don't have a down payment. That's fine. That's that's already been addressed. They don't have a down payment. Well, you know, the mobile home typically would rent or in this area rent the numbers, and this is why you need to know numbers, goes for 8 to 850. All right. So I'm going to give you that opportunity. I'm going to rent it out to you. Now, what we're doing is month to month. That's what we're going to do, Okay. Every month it renews and you just keep on going until you no longer need it or we convert it into something else. Everything in paper. Where I'm going to charge you is $950 plus a thousand deposit. The deposit is refundable at the end of your term, whenever we decide on if you return the property in conditions as such presentability. There's going to be wear and tear. I, I get that there is, but there's a fine line between wear and tear and holes in the wall. That's not wear and tear. Okay. So we're going to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is, let's say November is month number one. So then I get a deposit and I get first month. Then we go into December. I get the, the monthly, again, which is not 50, 1,000, whatever you decide. And then in January, the first of January, January I'm going to let them know, hey, uh, next month, but you're giving them 30 days. Now, this is something very important for all of y'all. If you're in a different state, different city, different county, you want to make sure that you are abiding by the rule regulations as a landlord, because that's what you are. But you got, you know, where I'm, where I'm at in Georgia and the whole Southeast, really 30 days is about all you need to give us somebody uh, heads up on. And it needs to be in writing. It needs to be in a letter. Preferably, if you can put it in a letter that they sign, almost like, uh, you know, confirming that they receive. So what I'm going to do with that is uh, January, I'm going to tell them, hey, in 30 days, uh, I'm actually going to put this property, this mobile home for sale. So, you know, I won't be able to renew your agreement again. But here's the thing. Now is a good opportunity for you, if you like, because, again, I know that they're getting money. Money's coming around the corner. Now, it may not be February. It may be March, maybe. You know, some people get a little bit later. But I'm going to toss that out there and say, instead of renting, you know, as long as you rent, you're never going to own. So here's what I'm going to do for you, since you already live in the, in the mobile home. I will, I will put it out there on the market, but you have first dips. But if you don't buy it or you decide to, then on February, I need you to a big property. That'll be the 30-day mark, and you won't owe again. And we'll give you a deposit at that point. Nine out of 10 people will buy. Nine out of 10 people don't buy because they don't have the money. They don't have a resource for it. But if income tax money is coming right around the corner and you're offering them the same amount that you're paying now, 
you can continue to pay it, but I will need a down payment because you're converting in that from a month to month rental into a lease option or into a note, into a finance, whatever you created financing you decide to do with them, put it in writing, okay? Put it in writing and you just carry on with that. So come February or March, now they have 10,000. At minimum, they have a large down payment they can give you. There you go. 10,000 maybe covers everything you're into. You only had to wait a couple months, but you don't waste any time. You started collecting money. Mobile homes, you know, it's funny how the work with mobile homes a lot of times we've seen is that, you know, houses tear up. Mobile homes tear up just a little bit more, right? But there's something about when a mobile home is vacant that is just sitting, there is a natural wear and tear that happens. It is weird how that approach happens, but I would say you're better off having somebody there taking care of the mobile home. Not to mention, if there's leaks in the mobile home, you're letting it sit behind and you show up two months later to see it, now you got a flooded house, not, not productive again, right? So let's see. Good evening, good evening. Yes. How does one start investing with little no money? You don't need any money to start investing in mobile homes because you can come in as a bird dog or as a wholesaler. When you're a wholesaler, all you do is put it on a contract agreement and you reassign the agreements and you make profits in between. I'll call it getting paid for your for your time. So that's a, Eduardo, that's a good question. So, and I think we do have a couple of coachings on that on YouTube. So you can check that out as well. Prim, Prim is an investor partner. Always happy to have you here, sir. Let's see, I think I had one more. Uh, Don, good, good evening, good evening. Yes, so let me keep going. All right, let's keep going. And then don't forget at the end of this, I'll have questions that y'all can ask as well. We'll open up the floor. I know on Instagram, you can't unmute yourself. But you can wave or drop a comment. So let's uh, keep going on this. So that's one of the strategies that, that we're thinking about. Now, uh, it depends also on what the, the park, that's another thing. You know, if the park does not allow subleasing, you might be limited to. But that's where you have to come in and you have to build a relationship. The hardest investment ever, it doesn't matter how you put it, is always number one. After that, things get easier. If you have a good relationship with park, park owners, park managers, they're going to open the door for you a little bit more. These parks where we have Section 8, where we have veteran assistance housings, where we have Airbnb, they didn't care for us to do subleasing, period, when we first started. You know, they would say, well, if you buy it and you fix it up, you need to sell it. Or, you, you can buy it to them if you want, that's fine, but I want to see a true note being created. That, that's the only way we'll allow you to invest. Today, I'm doing Airbnbs. I'm doing Section 8s. I'm doing veteran assistance. And comes 2023, January 1st, we're introducing three new exit strategies, one of them being uh, for elderly. You know, it, we're trying to we're trying to provide more and more housing in need. And one of those is uh, elderly people needing to get to certain facilities, medicals, attention, that sort of thing, where they're having to travel three to four or five hours to get there. You know, if we can provide housing to them, there'd be a good uh, there's a good need for that as well. So just one of many. But. Airbnb is a great, though. I would say Airbnb is a good one, definitely, because here's the thing with Airbnb. If you fully, if you fully furnish, uh, uh, okay, I'll get to that question in a minute. Uh, I don't see anybody spinning on Zoom trying to get in, so I just got a message on here. So uh, I don't see anybody in the waiting room. So um, what was my train of thought? This is what happens when I drop chats on Zoom, okay? Uh, Airbnbs. If you fully furnish, somebody asked, uh, why do you not put the stoves or fridges in mobile homes, even as renters? Because people steal them. That's why. You know, back when I was doing nothing but rentals, it's like when they would vacate, even in good terms, they would vacate the home or especially if we had to evict them, the, the, the stove, the fridge, they would come out missing and nobody knew where they went. It was like one mysterious thing would happen. Yeah, just somebody came in and took them. So we said, fine. So we said, no more, uh, no more appliances and rentals. They have to provide their own. But on the rent the owns or the leases, lease options, we'll go ahead and keep doing them. Well, you know, you have to rehab these mobile homes to a certain standard. So if they're rentals, you're going to give it almost, I don't want to say poorly, but you're going to give it the lowest rehab. Uh, if you're going to start doing lease options, notes, you're going to step up your rehab a little bit more. If you're doing Airbnbs, you're going to step it up a little bit more. And then it also depends on the markets. So on some of these lease options, we said, well, let's go ahead and uh, let's put a fridge and a stove in there. Some we even brought a microwave. Yeah, plenty fine. Let's do it. And we quickly noticed that people were saying, I don't really like it. I don't like the color. I don't like the size. It doesn't have ice maker. It was full complaints. And they would go back to saying, can you just remove them and we'll just bring our own? Sure, we'll get them out of there. And we just took them out and sold them, got rid of them. And the more we did that, the more people kept saying it. So we thought, well, you know what? We're not, we're no more appliances, no more appliances across the board. But the people I started asking me, why don't you put those? Does that not add value to the mobile home? No, 
It does not. Okay. When you're doing a rehab in some of these mobile homes, always think about what can I do to the mobile home as a rehab that'll bring me extra money. Okay. Here's the number one way. Add an extra room. If you can take a two, two, two bedroom, two bad single wide and add an extra room. Now that's a great way to make money, both as a rental, as a rent to own, as a flip, because it's bigger, bigger the house. And some of that could be in, in addition to the mobile home. But some of you are talking about, let me put a uh, marble countertop. Let me put these shiny floorings. Nobody's paying more for that. that. That's just luxury. And sure, people may like it more, but they're not going to pay more. So when you start doing something like appliances, I would say either go all in or stay away from it. Don't put appliances. And they'll ask, you know, can you put a stove in here? Can you put a microwave? Can you put a fridge? No, we do not. And as part of our agreements, the documents, it shows here clearly that we do not provide appliances of any kind. Put, put that out there. But if you're going to do Airbnb, then you do need to put everything. OK, not just appliances, but now you got to get couches and beds and washer dryers, especially that's huge. And, and you're going to fully furnish it. What's happened now is that if you do take it as an Airbnb, it's an additional investment. Now, we typically me and a partner of I that we do Airbnb. So, I mean, he's great at what he does. He handles the Airbnb side. I handle the mobile home side. But he is able to furnish an entire 16 by 80, 14 by 70, 3, 2, 4, under twenty five hundred dollars. Got to get creative. It's, it's all where you're shopping. Nothing that he buys is new. And as he mentions, it's like, look, like, most people like something more a little old, but it's being kept up than something brand new. There's just something weird about that. So he'll do, you know, again, he handles that. But he'll take something like an old table and sand it down, kind of stain it, all kinds of, you know, that's a lot of time consuming for me is the way I see it. But it works. People love it. People love lamps and decorations and all that. And he does phenomenal with that. So when you do something like that, now you're able to sell it for a lot more. So let's say that I have a mobile home that I'm selling for twenty thousand unfurnished, twenty thousand cash or best offer. If I come in and I put an additional two thousand, maybe even three thousand to furnish it all the way around, everything. That means that somebody can move in and bring nothing in two. You're talking you can raise it for another ten to twelve thousand, maybe. And we sold one like that. We had an unfortunate during COVID in uh, Tallahassee, Florida, where we were doing one of our first uh, one of our first uh, Airbnbs. And what happened is uh, during COVID, they shut the pool, they shut the community, uh, they, they had all kinds of stuff in that park. But when COVID hit, obviously, they didn't want anybody coming in, so they started shutting down. Now, that's one of those issues where you cannot control. Even though my partner went in shortly after, started posting, this is no longer available part of the Airbnb, people had already given enough reviews that the Airbnb was messaging. You need to open up these, not just remove them off the listing, but you need to open up these as you first originally listed, <clears throat> or you need to remove the listing. That was a bummer. We had to remove the listing because uh, they had no date as to when they were going to open those uh, facilities uh, back up in, in the community. But my partner, being that he knows the market as well, we were able to sell that mobile home for almost 15000 more than we would have if it wasn't furnished. OK, so things like that happen again. You know, it's always about getting creative. I like Airbnb because if something breaks inside the mobile home, a TV, a bed, a couch, Airbnb replaces it. Uh, you do have to replace things as uh, in the home, obviously, if there's a leak or something like that isn't working. But again, all you're doing is getting these creative ways to rent the home for two, three months. And who knows? Some of you start out that way and say, well, I'll go ahead and do the Airbnb for now. But come February, I I'm done with it. I'm going to go ahead and sell it. But you start seeing that revenue and suddenly, oh, this actually makes pretty good money. You start getting used to it and you learn the system and realize that this can actually make you good profit versus if I just sell it. Even if I finance it, you know, there's an end date. Why be in a rush? You know, if you got something like Airbnb or month-to-month -month rentals and on there, especially the month-to-month, -month, you specify that you will not do any repairs. That's part of the agreement. You know, you're willing to lower the number or whatever number you set on if they agree to fix anything in these repairs. So if that's the case and you're a landlord, but not really a landlord, okay? Come January, February, I will say, I'm going to keep making my profits. And when I'm absolutely tired of it, for whatever reason you get tired of it, then you can sell it. Now you've made a year, maybe two years worth of Airbnb money or month to month money, right? So things like that happen. So let me see. Free curb. What are you talking about, friend? Free curb. Curb appeal or? I don't do landscape very well. Let me see. Partner up with investors. Uh, if you partner up with investors, maybe you don't want to be a, you know, and there's so many ways you can get creative. You know, you don't have to sell outright. You can sell 50-50. You can sell 60-40, 30-70. It just depends. Maybe you don't want to be a landlord, but you have somebody, an investor, friend, or partner who he or she specializes in landlord, maybe, but they don't have the funds. They can't pay your whole 20-25K. Well, could 
potentially you sell to them at lower than numbers. It has to make a lot of rent, it has to make a profit. They will pay you in a longer amount of time, but they're going to take this as a long-term rental. So you, you see, you remove the responsibility and that's a win already. You know, trying to sell these homes is one thing, trying to make X amount of month, that's one thing, but removing the responsibility. I don't have to take phone calls. I don't have to worry about the, the tenants or any issues or what's working. That's all on the partner. So that's another strategy is as well as find partners. Some of some people out there want to do Airbnbs. You know, I read the best Airbnbs and I know I keep going to that because I am pushing. You know, there's a high, high demand in housing and Airbnbs are terrific. But uh, I've read that the best uh, way to be uh, doing Airbnb strategically is by owning nothing but controlling all, which that's overall is a great investment anyway. If you can come in and control everything but own nothing, you know, that that's puts you in a better term, if, if you will. So what's happening is a lot of these uh, people are getting into, let's say, apartment complexes. Now, you can't buy an apartment complex overnight or try to invest in it and have all kinds of free cash in there. But what if you can come in and get a apartment, just one, for instance, or a mobile home, okay? And you're going to pay the low lot rent, the rental, and then you're going to turn, you're going to turn around and you're going to use it as an Airbnb or as a short-term rental. That's where the profits are going to come in and how much money are they really into the property. You see, that's how that allows them to get another one and another one. But you got to find them, okay? We have sources, websites. Uh, we have uh, certain social medias that we bless on this. You're going to have to come into more coaches for us to get into that or definitely request some uh, some of those uh, calls so we can cover that as well. Let's see. All right, we're down to 823. Time flies. I got one more, okay? Definitely put it in paper. You know, I cannot stress that enough. A, a lot of investors are. The one mistake that you can make, and I do want to cover that for y'all, uh, you know, as a tenant to be, I will give you X amount of money now, but uh, I will give you the remaining like down payment. So let's say you're going to do a lease option with them and you're requiring, okay, require, know the definition of that. It's a requirement for you to be able to get into the property with a 3000 or 4000 5000 whatever you decide, down payment. That is mandatory. Now think of yourself if you were going out to buy a vehicle and there was a requirement for you to buy with X amount of down payment. What if you didn't have 3000 what if you only had 1500 Would the dealership say, oh, okay, that's fine. You go ahead and take the car. Now, they would say the requirement here clearly lists that it has to be 3000 in full pay down payment. Well, the same has to abide for you as a landlord, as a, a selling uh, selling of these properties is, you know, if they can't meet that. Now, one thing I will say is, okay, I'll take the 1500 now and I'll wait. How much time do you need? I can have it in two weeks. I will wait for two weeks on that for you to come up with the money, but you cannot move in until you have that money. One thing of issue that we've had many times, and I see this repeatedly, is they'll get the same story that I just gave you, okay? And they'll say, well, go ahead and move in, and in two weeks, you give me the money. Something happens in there where they don't come up with money. None. They don't come up with any of the money. Well, my kid was sick. My car broke down. I had a flat tire. Uh, the, sun didn't shine, the sun didn't shine very good today. I mean, it's just a list of excuse, 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 excuse. And bottom line is the remaining of the balance that was due for the down payment, they can't come up with. It. Now they start talking about they'll pay you weekly or about weekly. Or, and now if you want to get rid of them, it's not as simple as terminating the agreement. Now you have to go for a true eviction process. So, look, I'm trying to get you to look out for all the above because things happen. So put everything in writing, put everything in paperwork, paperwork. Do uh, use DocuSign, use whatever secure system you like, but definitely use something so that you you, you don't get yourself in some illegal issue. All right. Let me announce a couple of things that are coming up, uh, and then I'll take some questions. Y'all can go ahead and drop them on the chat here on Instagram if you like. I'll answer the above. Open chat at this point, uh, questions. It does not have to be with this uh, topic. So, But November 30th, it is set as of now. So that is a call that I have been pushing myself, and that is because of how many realtors, brokers, investors call me. Jay, I want to buy a mobile home, but it has no title. I had a, a realtor call me where he was not able to do a closing because they could not get a title in, into the closing table on time. I asked him how much time did they had, and we were working on it for about four months. Four months, she couldn't come up with a title. My goodness. So it is a lack of education, and that's fine. You know, there's a lot of things, a lot of hoops to jump many times to get to some of these things. A lot of these city officials, they don't like mobile homes. That's a granite. Fine. We can make peace with that one. But I want to do a virtual Okay, I'm not even going to ask you to leave your house. It's going to be virtual. Get on the computer and learn. And it's going to be about a two to two and a half hour of virtual coaching on how to solve title issues, liens, how to get bonds, how to verify bins inside the house, outside the house. You know, a lot of these closings that are not happening, they will be able to happen if we can get you a title. 
A lot of these lenders, if they do loan credit unions, banks, uh, you know, even hard money, private money, they're not going to lend you on the mobile home you're buying with the bill of sale and hoping to get a title. They're going to say, bring me a title and then we'll see. You know, and quickly into that, so part of that reason is because if you are borrowing from a, let's say, hard or private money lender is the title typically needs to be tra transferred into your name and their name, which means that both of y'all have equal rights to it, 50-50. So if you don't have a title, it's not happening. We're going to solve that issue for you. OK, uh, no more closings it's gone on done is the way I was going to put it on there. But, you know, you you, you see all these uh, events, all these coaches, and it's all about save you money, save you thousands, make you thousands. I would say this is one of those events that really, truly will make you thousands and will save you. You know, that one closing that this realtor wasn't able to do, that could have been thousands of dollars they would have made, but they could not because they didn't have a title. OK, don't look at anything you invest in, by the way, as to how much it's going to cost you. That's mistake number one. The best investment you can ever make is in yourself. Nobody can take that away from you. Education. And if you can learn how to get titles, bond titles, and do band verifications, you can be a real true problem solver, not just for yourself. But what about getting deals? What about having somebody who reach out to you and you solve their problems for a pay? See what I'm saying? I was making a video earlier. And one of the things I mentioned was, you know, a lot of these park owners, park managers may not need uh, for a investor in the parks. They're quick to say, no, we don't need you. But if you can be a problem solver, asking them, what about these three mobile homes sitting here? I see no activities happening. Uh, they may say, well, there's title issues with those, so we're just not bothering with those. But what if I could solve the title issues on these mobile homes, and then therefore we can invest in them? Would you accept that? They can't charge you for something that doesn't belong to them or something that has issues of some sort with the titles. That means three free mobile homes for you. That's how that works. That's how we get so many of these mobile homes into our inventory as well. So... Yes, I will be teaching all the above. That is November 30th. November 30th, that is a Wednesday. Wednesday, I believe it's 7 p.m. EST time. So that is not a call you want to miss. Again, if you're worried about how much it's going to cost, probably not for you. That's how I'll leave that one alone. Let me see. All right, a <clears throat> couple questions on here. So go through these, and then I got one coaching call. So how does this start investing? I got that one. If one lives in California, can you host it virtually in other states? Absolutely. I do it every day and twice on Sunday. You can do any type of investment, not just wholesale from other states. Uh, you know, you can. we're doing rehabs in Ohio right now. So I'm not, I, I was in Ohio, but now we got our contractors working up. It's all about having the right team boots on the ground if you need it. But if you're a wholesaler, then you don't have to be as hands-on anyway. You can do it anywhere. Put the mobile home under contract. Make sure that you control the mobile home. And when you do have visitors or investors who want to see it, make sure you coordinate that accordingly. And then you are the lead to firm both ends. You control that asset. Okay. We'll probably have a wholesale course uh, coming up very soon as well. So stay tuned for that. All right. So yes, November 30th, check it out. It's not on our website yet. As a matter of fact, we had a, uh, an event this past weekend and that's when I first started talking about it. And again, is the excessive calls are coming back in to, my home has a lien. My home has no title. And it's like, well, I'm going to just create an event. Everybody can zoom, can come and join it for that. After that, I don't know how you get a title. You'll have to figure that one out. All right. So that's all I got for y'all this evening. It is right around 830 and I have another coaching to jump on. So thank you all who joined us this evening and have a great night.